this is very very unfortunate and very very sad chairman of the christian association of nigeria can in michika local government area of adamawa state lawan andemi has been killed by boko haram this was made known on tuesday by ahmed sakida a journalist known to have access to these boko people he tweeted saying to break some news items can traumatize i'm battling with one of such reverend andemi hmm kidnapped by Boko Haram was killed yesterday. Reverend Andemi was a church leader, a father to his children and the community he saved. My condolences go to his family. Daily Post has reported that Lawan Andemi was declared missing on Saturday, January 3rd. Andemi's disappearance followed a foiled attack on Michika local government area Adamawa by Boko Haram. In a video, Andemi, while pleading with the authorities, commended his captors for treating him well. He urged his family members to pray for his release, adding that if he is not released, maybe it is, we, it is the will of God. Andemi said, I have never been discouraged because all conditions that one finds himself is in the hand of God. God will make them to take care of me and to leave me alive. We still walk and he will touch them. I am appealing to my colleagues, reference, reference particularly my president and my governor for my release. These people have been doing well and doing me well. They provide me every need. They haven't done anything wrong to me. So I believe that God who made them to act in such a manner to me will make all arrangements for me to live here. But by the grace of God, I will be better. I will be together with my family and children if the opportunity is not granted maybe it is the will of god i urge you all to be patient don't cry don't worry but thank god for everything but president muhammadu Buhari had responded to a statement by the khan which accuses government of not doing enough to stop the uh, persecution of christians in nigeria president of khan reverend dr samson Ayokunle, in a strong statement, urged the federal government to deploy every necessarily available resource at its disposal to ensure all Christians in the captivity of Boko people and Iswa terrorists are released. But Buari, in a statement sent to Daily Post, signed by his spokesman, Gaba Shewu, assured Khan and other Nigerians that the security forces were working endlessly to secure the release of the hostages in Boko Haram captivity. The president appealed to Nigerians not to see terrorist attacks and plans as a religious fight for persecution of Christians, adding that not seeing terrorists as they should be is exactly what they wish to divide Nigerians. The statement read, the security forces of Nigeria are working continuously to turn those taken hostages by Boko Haram to their families, friends and communities. In doing this, the government has has full confidence in their ability to accomplish the task. Nigerians must, not con must continue to be united in ensuring that they do not subscribe to the terrorist message of division. Unfortunately, some leaders and politicians seek to make political capital from our religious differences. As we fight Boko Haram on the ground, so too must we tackle their beliefs. Stability and unity in face of their hatred is itself a rejection of their world view. This government shall never tolerate religious intolerance. We clearly and unambiguously restate our support for the freedom to practice whichever belief you wish. The politicization of religion as forbidden by the constitution has no place in Nigeria. So guys, uh, this is really unfortunate. Just like I said, it's really a, a, a sad one. You know, what happened on Christmas Day, Nigerians have not been able to come out of that shock. And these guys are boasting that they did this in, you know, you know, as a revenge. But what is there now is that a lot of lives are going in for all of these things day in, day out. And the government will come and be saying, oh, they are doing, they are doing this, they are doing that. It's all about rhetoric. It's all about rhetoric. Now, the president, you know, was assuring nigerians and can that they shouldn't see all of these things happening as a result of a you know 
the persecution of Christians. Or what do you expect people to say? Leah Shaibu is still there. The one that happened even before throughout last year with about three incidents. All they say aid workers. What happened to them? We know what happened to them. The same thing. The same. I don't. I don't know whether you guys are getting it. After all of these things will happen, the government will come and issue statement. The same statement they've been issuing. This. Uh, this uh, the, uh, this statement we just talked about is just what they released after the one that happened in 2019, December 2019, some weeks back. I'm very sure they are still going to repeat the same rhetoric again because this issue of uh, this uh, Reverend Father, the current president in Andamawa State, happened just yesterday. By today or tomorrow, you will hear another statement from the government. The same thing, you know, on the same trend. Last year, let, let's just even take the one, the statement or the incident that that have been happening since uh, last year. After each incident like this, they will release the same statement that we are doing this, we are doing this, we are to, we have. And like Mohammed, they come and tell you, they have been defeated technically. Just like the question we have been asking, how do you relate technicality and reality? We are talking about reality, you are talking about technicality. And yet the reality there is that people lives are going in for it day in day out they will still come and read this same rhetoric the government will say they are doing their jobs they are they are trying yes they are trying kudos to you you are trying like i i want to rate them in the scale of one to ten you are just two you are just on stage two so if you're on stage two then you should be able to judge for yourself whether you have you have you have, you have done the needful and like I believe, no government that does not, you know, do one or two things, not that they will just stay down and be sleeping. They do things, but the rate at which they do it, it is what is really annoying and makes people feel that they are not doing anything because, like I said, in the scale of 1 to 10, it's just about, they are still on stage 2. And you can't tell me that somebody is working as far as, uh, you know, uh, a progress is concerned. You can't be telling us that you are working. You can't be telling us that you are working. Because people who are really going in for it day in, day out, they are human beings, they are flesh in their blood, they are families. Very touching ways. You can imagine from this, uh, the, the, the reverend father, the reverend. You know, it was like, if they release him, fine. If they don't release him, maybe that's the will of God. You can imagine. So touching statements. And that people shouldn't cry for him. Very, very unfortunate. All of these things have become free for insecurity and um, recently we heard from a uh, murik we heard from a uh, miyeti allah we heard from all these northern people or northern groups recent one is the one from ocean state the muslim in ocean state saying that uh, the security outfit the one that the government has the conventional one that they are doing enough that there is no need for any any form of a security outfit my advice we go to the southwest governors they should stand you know, they are feet on the ground concerning this Amotekun. Because the rate at which the insecurity is escalating, or it has already escalated in the south, in the northern part of the country, they shouldn't wait until it will happen like that in, in the southern part of the country. They should make sure that this Amotekun, you know, according to what a lot of people have been saying, that it has come to stay. They should abide by that. They should do everything necessary by law and by whatever means to make sure that they are it's really they are backing it very well constitutionally and otherwise they should back it very well we don't need to wait until when things must have escalated before they start swinging into action they need to do the needful now we do we don't want what is happening in the north the insecurity that is happening in the north to repeat itself at that large scale in the white southern part of the country they shouldn't wait on see that and and i'm sure that is what they say people who are really who are coming out to condemn a motorcycle that is what they are looking for that is what they want i don't know whether you people have heard about the people trooping into lagos all those okada people majority of them we have other people other regions who are into okada business but you know for a fact 90 percent of people in in lagos now and that is why you see them they don't obey traffic, they do anything, and they, they have this audacity. A lot of people who have had a first hand uh, experience with them, you know, can testify the rate at which and the manner at which these people talk to them. They blow, you know, 
off the, the, the scene, the traffic lights. They don't, they don't obey. They don't even do anything. And I was hearing from, you know, somebody that even the government can, you know, cannot even do anything. Even the, the state government in Lagos cannot even do anything concerning all these people coming into the state. And that is why you can see the effect of the result of this, uh, the, the free visa policy that the president just, whether he has signed, he signed in. What do we have to say to that? We have a lot of pressing in this country. The first thing is just to say, cool, let people just be coming into the country. Whereas the population in the country, they cannot even cater for them. And that is why these people are coming from all manner of, you know, anywhere, they, everywhere in the world. And they will be telling you that Fulani is men. A Fulani is men. A Fulani is any Fulani anywhere. Is Fulani anywhere. They can come to Nigeria. They don't even need visa. Thank God that the southern parts of the country, they've gotten the information. They've gotten the awareness. They know what is happening. And the government is not ready to do anything. They will tell you they are doing their jobs, but we can't see that. We can't see the effect. Some people will be like, oh, yes, eh, eh, what is happening now? You know, when you talk about the election, they will tell you what is happening eh, in, in, in PDP era that time. It's what is happening there. So they shouldn't complain. And somebody was like, you are saying we shouldn't complain? Then there, there wouldn't have been any need for people to change the government. We would have just left the government to continue that way. Now, what we are, we are, we are experiencing now is even far, far worse than what we were experiencing in the time of good Lord Jonathan. Jonathan, who is even a civilian, and we say we have a, a president who have a, who has a experience, you know, as far as a security is concerned. But what do we see now? We have a different versions of a all these a, 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 a criminals. But it's very unfortunate to what we are see hearing today concerning this a, a current president in Adamawa State. So guys, I don't know what you think about all of this is. I don't know what you think about all of this. Is you, now we're, we'll be waiting for Morik. We'll be waiting for all of those things, all of those people who are saying the security people are uh, that we have on ground that they are enough, that they are doing their job, that there's no need for any form of a or any other security outfit. That the ones, the police and the army, that they are doing their job, that they are enough. You can imagine the mindset of these people. So guys, let's hear your take concerning all of these things. Leave your comments below in the comment section. Thank you.